Before Islam, what did you believe in? What are the three biggest challenges you faced after converting to Islam? Aren't you afraid of going to jail? Some of my friends reject me uh, because they don't understand I'm being a Muslim. They don't have belief in because there's no hope. When they are filled of depression, no one help you. You, you can't find anyone rely on. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I will not, I, I will not answer. <laughs> <laughs>Yeah, right, the prophet. Are you planning to move to a Muslim country in the future? Yeah, I think so, because... Um, What's the reason you don't feel comfortable in your country? Um, I feel comfortable, but uh, I think I should learn more. I'm, I think I'm still young. And I'm, I still I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think I'm good Muslim, really, because I have too many mistakes. Still, I, even after I become a Muslim, I still have a lot of mistakes. So I think I should learn more in Islamic atmosphere and more knowledgeable Muslim people. What would be the country, Turkey, Egypt? Arabia. Yeah, every every so I don't I can't choose yet. So I just come here Turkey first. This year I want to go other countries too. Like uh, maybe next month I will I want to go Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Malaysia. Then after I travel around the world, then maybe I can choose one country. And then when I live there for a couple of times, and then maybe I come back to Korea and I can do my work. Like I can share my knowledge or something. <laughs> Before Islam, what did you believe in? I, I believe in God. I believe in God because I am a born Catholic and my parents are Catholic and my whole family is Catholic. So were you going to church when you were a child? Yes, 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 of course. Uh, when I was young, I go to church with my parents and actually I don't have that much like belief because I I just like was natural way because everyone go to church. So maybe I will go there and they give me the present and they give me the foods. So oh, I really enjoy it. Uh, but actually I, I feel really like happy with my family and my friends. But I think I don't feel that much belief in when I was young because maybe I, I don't have chance to think deeply about this. Why did you start questioning your beliefs? You were sitting, checking internet. What made you start? I should find a way. Actually, this is really long story. Uh, I told you I study music in university. So I wanted to be a musician. <laughs> musician? <laughs> yeah, musician. <laughs> <laughs> like I also released uh, like jazz music and I have a lot of musician friends. So I have chance to go to more concert in another country and it was Indonesia. So I went there. You're playing battery, guitar, what? Uh, I play piano, guitar a little bit and I sing sing a song. So I had concert in Indonesia, Jakarta. It was really interesting because I've never know about Islam at all. Because in Korea, there's no knowledge about Islam. It's really hard to know about this. You didn't even hear a word about Muhammad, Islam? Mm, no, 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 no. But I only know about, uh, I don't know, can I, I can say this, but I only know about uh, terrorists. <laughs> because in Korea, when I was young, the, there was a 911 and it was really big news in Korea, really big news. So I was also very shocked and they talked about like like Islam, blah, blah, blah. So I thought like Islam is kind of some dangerous things at that time when I was young. But when I come to Indonesia, I saw many girls who wear scarf and the guys who have the beard and pray. So I was really curious what, 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 why they're different. So I asked them, what is that? And they uh, replied me. This is about Islam and this is about the, their belief. And actually they were really kind and really they have, have a lot of hospitality for me. They always, oh, can I help you? I want to help you. I want to deserve you. I want to give you this. I want to give you a present. So 
when I was young, I thought like Islam is dangerous thing. But when I come to Indonesia, people were so different, so different. They were so kind and so calm and always smile and always help other people. So I think this is different that I know. It's, it's totally different. So I get interested in this religion at first. And I, I felt really good things in there. And I come back to Korea. Actually, there were, my situation was not good. Like financially was not good and my family stuff, not good. So I have to find a job. And my musician work don't make a lot of, it was not that stable. So I should work for my family, but it was very stressful very stressful. So because I really want like creative job, I want to make some something. It's not, it can be a music, it can be a video, I don't know, but I want to make something. But when I was working the company, it was not very happy. So I started YouTube. <laughs> so I started YouTube. But my YouTube channel started with music. I upload my cover music videos and like that kind of stuff. After that, I like suddenly I think like how do I talk about the feelings uh, in Indonesia? Like suddenly, I don't know why I thought like something like that. So I just tell uh, what I think about Muslim people because many Koreans think Islam is not, it's a little bit dangerous. But I felt so many good things about Islam. So I talked about that. I shared my feelings in YouTube. And like suddenly many people get interested in about this. So many people. So many people advised me about Islam. Like, oh, if you want to learn Islam, uh, then maybe you can ask to him. And ask to Imam. You can find mosque in Korea. And maybe you can practice how to pray or you can join how to fast in Ramadan. So I just slowly practiced. Like, I don't know why, but I just, I was like, just come in very naturally. I just go to the, I visit to mosque, uh, pray in the mosque, and I fast in Ramadan. And, and through the process, I get my belief have a little bit developed because when I pray with uh, other Muslims, like it feels really amazing. Like I, I, I felt like I, someone is helping me, like someone is watching me and someone is like, want to give me the hope because I was really depressed. Were, were you Muslim at that time you were no, practicing? No, no, no. no, I was not Muslim. Mm. Uh, I was Catholic, but I don't have that much belief. You're just trying to practice, but you don't have the belief yeah, in Islam. I yeah, I don't have belief, but I just start practice. <laughs> A kind of meditation or something. Yeah, like that's just, at, at that time I was like, oh, maybe I can join. Like, why not? Like, I want to learn other culture or other religion. And I told you I have, uh, I have a little bit depression at that time, really hard depression. And like, actually, Korean society is very comparative, very comparative. And do you see the Squid Game? Yeah, I know. It's like totally same, like Korean society, it's totally the same. There is only one winner. And if you don't win, everyone is loser. And you think you are fail, fail, you are a loser. So I also thought like, oh, why my life is like that? Why I'm not successful? But when I practice Islam at that time, I felt like really different. I, I felt like I find something I lost, I was lost. Because I always thought about that, where I'm from. Like, like, like the school teach me every knowledge about the science, maths, but they don't teach me why I'm from and who am I and where I'm going. And after I die, where I go? They don't suggest me the way I have to go. In Islam, I think they give me the answer that where I have to go and why do I live? I think this is really important because I was really depressed because I have no purpose of my life. No purpose. Like, why do I live? Where I'm going? Like, what do I have to do? I really have no answer. But when I practice Islam and when I'm with Muslim friends, Muslim people, and when I pray, like, Islam guide me. Islam answered me about the question, like, your purpose of life is to obey, obey Allah, because the God created us, everything. In Ramadan, I realized that about the gratitude, about the food, about the water, and about my life, about my friends, about my family, about the earth, everything. So after I felt that, I, after I realized that, I felt like gratitude to our Creator. So at the first time I fast in Ramadan, it was like three years ago. I you think. were not Muslim then? I was not Muslim. But I, I have belief. I have belief. I do believe in God. Because I'm, I'm in this world. And the God, only God, teach me and guide me where I have to go. And they only God teach me like the purpose of the life and how to be, make happy your life. So how did you give the Shahada? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, 
Yeah, it was, it was like two years ago, I think. Actually, I have the belief after the Ramadan. I do have belief. I do believe in God. But I, I didn't think about the Shahada because I thought even if I have belief, I can't be Muslim because I live in Korea, I'm Korean, the lifestyle is too, so different. I think it's not easy. You are the only Muslim in your culture? In your... Not only Muslim, but there are a few, but not many. But at that time, like some Korean Muslim messaged me. His name is Karam Kim Eun-soo. He studied in Medina right now. He graduated uh, uh, in uh, university in Medina. Study about the Quran, Dawa, and everything. He's uh, he's a really knowledgeable Muslim guy. So he messaged me, I want to help you. So I met him. I asked him about this question. Like I I have belief, but I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure I can be Muslim or not. And he answered me. He understand about that. Like nobody is perfect. Nobody's perfect. And even if you be a Muslim, it's not easy to have a perfect Muslim life. But if you don't be a Muslim then you can't be any benefits from this, and anything. But even if you do shahada, and if you be a Muslim, and after that, you can change yourself slow, step by step. And then God will reward you more and more. Because Allah SWT, our God is merciful and forgiveness, and He's a greatest, so He will help you. So if you be a Muslim at first, because like, you don't know, like, <laughs> you don't, I, can, I can die right now, like, like there's a heart attack or, I will traffic accident. I don't know. I can die right today, or nobody knows our future. Yeah. So I, I sh- so I felt like that way. So oh, I, I, I think I, I should be a Muslim then. So I went to the. You mosque. didn't talk, tell your parents anything. At first, I didn't. Tell. Okay. Uh, so so I, you went to masjid. Yeah. So I went to masjid in Taiwan, and I yeah I did shahada in there. <laughs> How was the feeling? How was the atmosphere? The guys around you? Uh, can you describe that moment for us? It was totally amazing. It was like when I find the masjid and there was an imam in Korea. He's the most knowledgeable imam in, in Korea. And uh, when I find him, there was other imams too. There, there was a meeting at that, that, that day. <laughs> Very about a coincidence, but uh, so I do shahada in there, and everyone in that place congratulations and welcome to me and welcome to Islam. And I felt like uh, you you know that like when I do shahada, every sins, every past sins are gone, and you became a new new person, new like a born baby. So I felt like oh, this is really amazing and like happiness. I I, I can't describe my feelings at the time it was it was really amazing what was your family's reaction when they found out that you converted to islam <laughs> actually there i, I filmed it <laughs> there's a video okay <laughs> so when I, uh, because i i do youtube so i can't hide it because my family also watch my youtube so when i talked to my mom she was so shocked she was so shocked and she said like how can how can you do that and she even talked to me like Are you going to be a terrorist? <laughs> oh. <laughs> because I, I understand because in Korea, the because of the image, like always the Western media show the, the negative things about Islam. It's because of media. So she was really worried a lot. But I tried my best to explain well about this. Islam is not dangerous and this is my belief. And I still love my family and nothing changed. It's just about my belief. She was really worried about that, but she also watched my YouTube video. So she watched many good Muslims, kind Muslims who helped me and who explain about Islam. So she also started to understand about this. Like she have a lot of knowledge about Islam right now because she watched my video. <laughs> she doesn't accept Islam. <laughs> Not yet, inshallah. Inshallah, brothers can pray for this. <laughs> yeah. But she understand and respect and support me. So now... What about other members of your family? Uh, they are also surprised at first time. And my one of my aunts still messaged me like, can you change your religion again? <laughs> but <laughs> but they, they are surprised, but they support me. They, they are nothing problem, no problem. Has anyone from your family or close circle accepted Islam because of you? There is. And also... 
my subscribers sometimes message me like I saw your video and I want to learn about Islam. I want to be a Muslim. How can I do that? So I message them like, oh, I will give you the information, the website and the imam number and where is the mosque in Korea. So some of my subscribers, Korean subscribers, become a Muslim through my video. So Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm, I'm really happy about that. What are the three biggest challenges you faced after converting to Islam? At first, when I convert to Islam, some of my friends reject me uh, because they don't understand I'm being a Muslim. Like my, my kids also once rejected from the kindergarten. So I think in Korea, they're not very open-minded to other religion. I, I think I'm not a good Muslim, but sometimes people judge about me a lot. Like you are Muslim, then why you do that? Why you do that? Why you do that? This is haram, this is haram. But I know, and I know, I know I'm not perfect. I do mistakes. So I think, I think I should try more to repent and try to more close to Allah and try to learn more. I think it's a long journey because I just come into Islam and I have to be more close to God. So I think if, if I have that attitude, mind, then Allah will help, help me. I, I always believe that Allah's help, inshallah. You, you have a big advantage, brother, <laughs> because, uh, for example, I get into adolescence, for example, 15 years when I was 15. So I may have so many sins until this age, mm. but your exams started three years ago. Yeah. So you have a lot of advantage compared to the guy who says, this is haram, how can you do that? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. We are aware of the great work you have done to defend Islam in Korea. Aren't you afraid of going to jail? <laughs> it should be. Uh, I'm from South Korea. Uh -huh. so it's okay, it's not North Korea. We have freedom of religion and we can talk any anything we want. We can, we can tell anything. I, I also defend a lot of things to defend Islam because like a few months ago in Daegu, the city of Korea, there is a con construction of mosque in there, but the residents offended. So it was stopped. So like a few months ago, I went there. I helped them protest and work with them to uh, help their construction of the mosque. Yeah, it can be a problem for me. I, I don't care. I don't care that much. Like, there is a freedom in, in Korea, freedom religion in Korea. So I can say what I want. So if there is a disadvantage about this, yeah, I, 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 I accept it. <laughs> After becoming Muslim, did you ever eat pork by mistake? I think so, because in Korea, Everything is pork based, pork based, really pork based. For example, when I go to a restaurant, I always ask them, is there a pork? Usually they say, oh, there's a pork. Or when they, sometimes they say, there's no pork. So I, when they say there's no pork, I eat, but I feel a little bit different. So I ask them, like, isn't this like pork based? Like the soup is pork based? They say, yes. And I said, you said there's no pork. And they said, there's no pork. It's just a soup. So like they, they don't have that knowledge about like halal food exactly. So it's not easy in Korea. Imagine that you are sitting in a park. A young Korean man comes to you and says that he knows you and asks you to tell him about your religion. You have just one minute. What would you say to him? I think I have to explain about the purpose of life. Korean society is too competitive and there many people don't have the purpose of life so they feel get depression easily. I have to explain them. Your purpose of life is obeying God, to serve God. And you can find a forever happiness in there. So you found you found the peace in Islam. Yeah, you can find the peace and happiness. What impressed you the most about our Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi his characteristics, his way of living, or a memory from our Prophet's life. What is the most impressive thing you think? Uh, okay, for me, when he was tried to spread Islam to the world, there was no Muslim, right? He was the only Muslim who could get the message and who want to spread the Islam, the message of Islam. I feel a little bit similar because I'm, I'm in Korea and no one is Muslim. I'm the only Muslim and I felt that feelings, like how to start with that, like how to Deal, how to deal with that. But our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't give up. I, I, I think it's impossible thing, but he did. He spread Islam to the world. And now he started with in, in, in the Mecca, Medina. But now, see, like far from place, like in Indonesia, Malaysia, in the like the west of Africa, everyone believes in Islam. And in, even in South Korea, I believe in Islam. I think this is the amazing thing. And the Islam is the most fastest grow, growing up religion yes. in the world. So I'm really 
impressed that that his personality and his action his everything but i really impressed that he did spread islam when the nobody believes islam what do you think is the biggest lie and the biggest truth in this world i think the biggest lie is you can't do it you can't do it. you can't i think this is lie because in korea i i told you korea is very conf comparative society so if you're not successful or something many people say to you you can't do it but it's not like i can't do everything i can't do everything what i want and it depends on belief I, if i do believe in god and if if i do believe the help of god and if i believe the plan of god i can do it i can try because i have strong motivation even if you can't reach the goals can't yeah maybe but if you do it with the strong motivation with your belief, then you can do something even if you can't reach the goal. So I think that's it. That's what I think. And the biggest truth is also... You can do it. Yes, same. <laughs> that's what I want to say. You can do it. Like, I believe in the mercy of God, the help of God, the plan of God. So I can, I can, I can do it. <laughs> what is your biggest dream in this life? I want to be a good person, good, good Muslim before I die. <laughs> I think it's not an easy thing. Purpose of life is obey our God. Our journey is to go to the Jannah. I want to learn more, practice more, and I want to do something for Korean Koreans too. Korean culture is a lot of anger and depression, and I think the one of the biggest reasons is they they don't have belief. They don't have belief because there's no hope. When they are filled of depression, no one help you. You can't you you can't find anyone rely on. The suicide rate is the highest. Korea is the highest suicide level. For example, I'm Muslim. If there's a good thing, I grade it. This is because of God. So I grade it too. And if there's a bad thing, I also can think this is just plan of God. This is just trial. I can overcome it. If you don't believe God, if you're atheist, if you don't believe anything, then there is a good thing. You think, oh, I'm successful because of me. So they can be really arrogant. And if there's a hard thing, they think like, oh, why world is like this? They blame themselves and they get the depression. And their depression is high then they suicide or something. I think in Korean society, really, they need the belief, I think. Imagine that you're a contestant in Squid Game and you have to deceive or lie to someone to avoid getting killed. What would you do? I don't want to die. I don't want to lie. I, I don't know. <laughs> you have the right to not answer this question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I will not. I, I will not answer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks for being with us. Oh, it, it, it was a great pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Hello, brothers and sisters, and thank you for watching the video. If you want to take a look at more of our videos like this, you can check the playlists we created specifically for you on the right, or you can check out our latest videos on the left. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so that we can reach and benefit more people. See you.